The greatest discovery in 400 years of modern science has to be the discovery of the creativity of the universe. I mean, think about it. We now know that the universe 14 billion years ago began as a little grain of sand and then expanded out and created the galaxies and the stars and then the planets and then rose bushes. I mean, it's just one long process of creativity. Now this, uh, this is a surprising development in science because of our conviction that the universe was just mechanical. In fact, it wasn't until the 20th century that the word creativity was even used to refer to the universe. The first person to do so was the philosopher Alfred North Whitehead. Before that, creativity was something that just pertained to humans. Now we realize creativity spreads all the way out, includes the entire universe. So the question isn't, am I creative? The question is, how can I release the creativity that I am? That's the fundamental question of the human being, really. And another way to say it is that how can I construct a life that is in alignment with the creativity that's coursing through me and the rest of the universe? So one way to begin is to look at what life does to nurture creativity. And this, um, this can be seen with these theories of the origin of life. So the basic idea is that the chemical processes of Earth complexified. And so we started off with the simple elements. 4.55 billion years ago, Earth was composed of, of the elements coming from the supernova explosion. But then through their mixing, they grew into more complex molecules so that they would maybe a lightning would strike and you'd have the chemical reactions creating some complexity. But then as time went on, these, these new molecules degraded back into their simple elements. But life came up with an idea that made sure the creativity went forward. It was the membrane. The membrane of a cell protects the complex molecular arrangements from degradation coming from the outside sources, collisions and chaotic interactions. So one clue we have then is that we can enter into that same process by creating our own membranes, psychic membranes. What does it mean to have a psychic membrane? It means that we reflect upon those elements that actually enhance our creativity, as well as those elements that degrade it or ignore it or put it in cold storage. And we then surround ourselves with a psychic membrane that lets into our lives those elements that activate our thinking, our imagination, and that block out those that, that weaken it and dilute it. And this, this is going to be different for each person, but I think actually each of us knows what those elements are because we can feel the difference. So this is the first step then in constructing a life that is organized around one's creativity is to participate in what flows into your life and what is blocked out so that those energies that activate creativity can be allowed to cook and to continue to come forth with new ideas, new projects, new visions without being degraded by the more um, lower grade activities that are taking place.